These days, it seems like you have more options than ever regarding web browsers. Edge, Firefox, Safari, Opera, Brave, and Vivaldi are just a few of the common browser choices today. But what if I told you that the majority of web browsers are powered by the same engine in the backend? That's right, all but two of the browsers I just mentioned are powered by Chromium. So what is Chromium? It's an open source browser project started by Google. It was developed alongside Google Chrome, which was released in 2008. Google created Chromium to build a safer, faster, and more stable browser experience. There's no way to confirm exactly why Google chose to make Chromium open source, but it's likely because Chromium sought to combine existing open source resources in an attempt to build a better browser engine. Google pulled from Apple's WebKit engine and their own V8 JavaScript engine, which were both open source projects. By making Chromium open source, Google was able to double down on their mission of building a faster, more stable internet since developers outside of Google could contribute. And that's exactly what happened. Older browsers like Internet Explorer and Firefox were just clunky in comparison, and Google Chrome was becoming the browser to use. So as other browsers evaluated how they could compete, they realized if they could also have the same speed and reliability as Chrome, they may win some users over. And what better way to do that than build your browser on Chromium? In other words, instead of fighting Google, why not join them in adopting the better browser technology? Browsers started to ditch their proprietary engines in favor of Chromium. Opera made the transition in 2013, and newer browsers like Brave and Vivaldi used Chromium since launch. Even Microsoft Edge launched a complete rewrite based on Chromium in 2020. This transition in particular made a big statement to the browser market. Chromium is here to stay. Microsoft adopted Chromium to utilize its compatibility with web standards and to enhance performance, security, and reliability. Now, all of these web browsers have one thing in common. They all let you click the subscribe button. It's free to subscribe and clicking the bell ensures that you won't miss a new video. Okay, so we've already discussed some of the reasons why browsers adopted Chromium, but what are some of the pros and cons? The pros include things like stability, speed, and reliability due to the volume of developers contributing and making improvements. But Chromium also has a major advantage when it comes to browser extensions. The code for a single extension can function on Chrome, Edge, Opera, Brave, Shift, and more seamlessly. If you want your extensions to function on Firefox and Safari as well, you have to do some extra work to adapt your extensions to be compatible. Since Chromium-based browsers instantly support so many extensions, it's easy to develop a new browser that users will want to adopt from day one. Chromium also has powerful cross-platform support, functioning on Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and Chrome OS. But despite all the positives, Chromium has some drawbacks as well. The biggest concern is privacy. Google is a data company. They're in the business of collecting user data to target you with ads. That's why the majority of Google services are free. You're paying with your data. Advertisers pick the type of user they want to target, and Google connects them with those users and makes money from the ads. Now, there's nowhere on the Chromium website that says Chromium sends all your information to Google so Google can collect it in a database. However, the fact that it's a Google project means Chromium is almost guaranteed to ping Google servers for various tasks. Things like extension updates and DNS queries cause Google servers to be pinged. So even though Chromium is isn't sending your browsing history directly to Google with a bow on top, they still have sneaky ways of collecting user data. Chromium is very much a double-edged sword. It's convenient, it's powerful, and it's reliable. And the complexity of writing a browser engine from scratch is the exact reason many developers have chosen it for their browsers. It's just easier. But this complexity is exactly why it's hard to quantify how Google might be collecting user data. If they see an angle to track users and get away with it, they're most likely going to take it. We've already seen Google leverage their position multiple times, with a recent example being the rollout of the Manifest V3 extensions API. This API is what developers use to make extensions for Chromium, and Manifest V3 made some key changes that make it much harder for ad blockers to function. Eventually, all Chromium extensions will be forced to adopt Manifest V3, meaning Google is attempting to deprecate ad blockers across all browsers that use Chromium. 
why is this the case? Well, it benefits their business. Remember, they make money from ads, so fewer people using ad blockers means more ad impressions on their sites, and that means more revenue. Another example of this is Google pushing user agent client hints in Chromium, a new alternative to user agent strings that provides rich info like your OS, screen resolution, device memory, and more. All of this goes to show the biggest problem with Chromium is privacy. Google has the greatest influence over Chromium, and since so many browsers have adopted it, they can make changes to Chromium whenever they want to suit their business interests. And that begs the question, are some Chromium browsers better than others from a privacy standpoint, or are they all equally as bad? Unfortunately, most Chromium browsers, including Brave and Opera, have some privacy concerns because they support Chrome extensions. Since Chrome extensions ping Google servers for updates, the only way around this is to not support Chrome extensions. And there is one browser that does this. Ungoogled Chromium is an open source variant of Chromium that removes all Google specific web services, including extensions. So while you can install Chrome extensions, you have to install them and update them manually, ensuring the browser never pings Google servers to check for updates. Any web browser could adopt ungoogled Chromium as its base, but since extensions are an essential part of the browsing experience, none of the main browsers have chosen to do this. So what if you want to avoid Chromium entirely? Sadly, there aren't many options left, but it is still possible. For Windows users, Firefox is basically your only option. Firefox uses Mozilla's Quantum Engine and features its own proprietary extensions library. There's not quite as many extensions as Chrome, but all the main ones you'd look for like ad blockers and password managers are present. For Mac users, you could use Firefox, or you could also use Safari. Apple still runs Safari on its own WebKit engine, and like Firefox, they have their own proprietary extensions library. The biggest disadvantage of using a non-Chromium browser, aside from extension availability, is speed and reliability. I've noticed that browsing in both Firefox and Safari can sometimes feel sluggish, and I've experienced broken pages in both browsers that load perfectly in Chrome. But Firefox and Safari do have unique unique advantages. Chromium is known for being a battery hog and a RAM hog, and Firefox and Safari are more efficient in both of these areas. Safari especially excels in these areas, since Apple can ensure its software runs at peak efficiency on its own hardware. So do I think that everyone should run from using a Chromium browser? Not necessarily. Using a Chromium browser has benefits depending on what you value most. I've mostly used Chromium browsers in recent years due to its speed and stability, but I also realize I'm making a trade-off and making it easier for Google to collect my data. If you'd prefer Google having less of your personal info, it might be best to avoid Chromium and choose Firefox or Safari. If you want to know my thoughts on how Firefox and Safari compare to common Chromium browsers, you can check out my comparison video here.